Hi everybody, good evening. It is evening time. Um, I'm working on my elephant abstractions quilt. Um, and I was just, I was just working on it for a little while. As, as maybe you've uh, known, I had a bit of a cough. Um, and it was getting a bit worse. I'm like real earth mother. I do everything naturally. I was putting onions on my feet and <laughs> oil of garlic. <laughs> um, it, it was it was getting bad though, and my husband on Sunday he's like, I think we have to take you to urgent care. So we went to urgent care because he's I, I was laying there and he's like, you're wheezing terrible. I'm like, I'm not wheezing. And we go into the doctor and she goes, you're oh you're wheezing your lungs. And I'm like, oh well. And and he's like, I told you so. Anyway, um, she had she said I have to do a breathing treatment, and and um, it's acute bronchitis. It's not cute. It's not cute at all. I'm cute. It's ugly. It's ugly bronchitis. Anyway, um, she says, you need to do this breathing treatment. <laughs> so <laughs> the nurse comes in and um, they bring this machine. I don't know what this thing is. They bring this machine in and it, there's a tube with, I don't know, vapor or something. <laughs> and she goes, you have to hold this thing. I don't know if any of you have done it. You hold this tube thing that you have to blow into or something. You hold it in front of you. And the nurse is describing it to me. She said, I want, there's a little like a gauge, I guess how to measure your lung capacity. I don't know. So she's like, you have, the nurse is telling me this, right? She said, you have to take a deep breath and then you have to blow into the tube, right? So I'm like, okay. So I'm holding this thing and and I take a deep breath. I'm like, <sighs> there's nothing left for. And she goes, and she goes, what did you just do? I said, I did what you did. She said, no, I went like this, so I don't blow into your tube. <laughs> I felt like such an idiot because there was nothing left in me. I had blown it all away, and I'm like, <sighs> and my my husband he's sitting there, and he goes. Oh, Oh, she's, my darling is an artist. And, and I'm like, I, and I'm like, what the heck does having me be an artist? I mean, like, I'm not an artist. I'm an idiot. Right? It was so funny. Anyway, I blew it and I didn't get very far. And um, then they, I, it, 10 minutes later, the, they have, I had to blow it again. I know what I did. So I, I did a little bit better. So I'm on antibiotics and steroids and uh, an inhaler and all of this stuff. Uh, um, I'm getting better though. Um, I got to take care of my, got to take care of my chest. But anyway, I thought I have been taking it easy. I really have. I've not been doing a lot. My husband's been home the last couple of days. We've just had a lovely, quiet time. Awesome. Um, but tonight I just thought, oh, I want to come in and do something. I wanted to do it because I have my block party coming up. That's later. But I wanted to work on my quilt, my uh, elephant abstractions quilt, if you remember. So here it is. Here's the pattern. Um, oh, um, I'm, I'm going to be showing you. There's the pattern. I, my son Elliot had made up a, a, a mock-up of, of, on Photoshop of what hopefully my quilt's going to look like in general. I told you I'm going to be appliquing her onto the savannah-y look, looking background, hopefully. Um, so I have my key and I show you how I've kept organized. You really do have to keep organized with this project. I have my little handy dandy tools here that I, I'll show you what I got. Um, yeah, and I've, I'm working on it. It's not hard. A, a paper foundation paper piecing is not hard. Um, however, you really need to be organized, um, and you, you're in it for the long haul. It's it's not hard. You just have to like make sure you have everything organized. Now I have everything here, but I'm gonna have to. I have a, a, a nice box that I put everything away, um, having. Um, organized it all. I've organized all my fabric. Excuse me, as you will see, I, I put it all in Ziploc bags. My pattern is organized. All of my tools are organized. It's just a matter of organization. It's not hard though. And hopefully I can show you that it wasn't really hard. So I've just done that. I've just done a little bit. I've just done a little bit of her trunk. And um, yeah, so I'll put it away. <coughs> or I may, um, I'm going to work on maybe in the next couple of days or not. I don't know. I told you it's going to take a while because I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple blocks for my block party. Um, hopefully that'll be coming up. And um, that's for beginners, beginner, beginners. I'm really going to tailor it to beginners because quite a lot of people are like, oh, I want to do that. So again, I've told you before, if you're, um, 
if you're um, you know an advanced beginner it might be a bit elementary but it's fun it's fun and I really would like to I really get a kick out of people saying I actually made a quilt because um, of because of you know, my, my teaching <laughs> my teaching so anyway this is my my um, little introduction to foundation paper piecing not hard but man got to keep organized okay thanks folks I hope you enjoy the next bit see ya bye okay so I'm working on my elephant quilt and I just wanted to show you the uh, <laughs> the steps that I've had to take um, to keep organized. I'm fairly organized when I'm sewing, but this is, you really have to be organized. What I've done here is I've put all of my fabrics um, in Ziploc bags and I've marked them all with the, the, um, the letters, I mean the, um, the names of the fabric, which correspond to my chart, which I had showed you before. Now actually I have changed up um, I've changed up one or two things. I've changed up the the uh, trunks, the trunk stripes, and um, the body of the trunk with, the, with another color. And it's all, it's because I had a lot of this batik here. This um, it, it, it's the purples and the pinks and the, and the reds. I really liked. So I I have a lot of that, and I I know which now which which one I'm grabbing for that. Um, it's instead of ruby red, I'm using that one. Um, and then it, for the stripe, I'm using the dark burgundy. And I'll show you how far I've gotten. Um, this is so far. This is my progress so far. And that is the trunk bit, which is here. I've gotten about that much done. So that, remember I was saying that the, this would have been the yellow or the gold of my pattern. I'm just doing it in muslin and I'm not doing the full length. So when I go to trim it, I can just trim that and then turn it under and, and have a nice neat um, applique to back, applique it onto my background fabric. So uh, these are these are just pieced. They're not sewn together yet. And what I'm doing is I started with this one, which is one. The paper's still on it. One A 1B, 1C, and then you go on to, and it just gives you, this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and you just continue finding the pattern pieces. Now my pattern pieces are in this pile, as you remember I did the whole, you know, getting my, my, um, my uh, copies made on one side of the paper. They don't come in order, like there's I'll show you. There's like <laughs> number 78 along with number 86. And then I believe here there's number 4. <laughs> so, you, you, you know, you have to cut out the pieces that you're needing and trying to keep them in, in some semblance of order, the lower ones. Uh, um, to what you're what you're using because you're you're doing it from one to I believe it's 96 sections not 96 pieces of fabric 96 sections of uh, you know hundreds and hundreds of fabrics now this again I want to show you what I've honed in on what I'm needing oh here I'm going to show you that's sort of what my quilt's going to look like Elliot did a sort of a mock-up on on a, like a photoshop and um, it's the burgundies and the pinks that you can pretty much see. Let's take that over. That, you know, the, the uh, trunk, the tusk trunks are there. Using perhaps a little bit darker of a pink um, and a red. But that's basically what it looks like. And if you remember my ombre background with the savannah and the black see how that goes so that's what it's I so that's sort of my reference there but what I'm doing is I'm putting I found out you really have to be organized and you know me I do not <clears throat> I don't like gadgets and gizmos but um, I have honed in I did order I didn't have I didn't have it on hand I did order a add a quarter six inch and an add a quarter 12 inch ruler very 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 important to do this this ruler here has a lip. It has a lip there. 
and I'll show you why you need that. It makes it so much easier to trim. I also have two sizes of my comic book boards to turn my pattern over. I have, if you remember, I had made this little rotating mat out of a, an old mat, an old cutting mat and an old Lazy Susan. I glued this on. And I'm finding everything right here, right next to my sewing machine. Um, I was looking at quite a few YouTube tutorials and it's like, you know, you, 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 you sew and then you iron. Well, I didn't want to do that. I, I have this little seam roller for wallpaper and it's doing an excellent job to, it's not finger pressing, it's rolling my thing. So I, I'm not getting up to the iron um, until my final section is done. Um, and this, so say here, this is a section. So I will roll, I will roll that seam, and then I will roll that seam, and then I will roll that seam, and then I will roll these seams. Also what I've found is to use, I changed my needle over to a Microtex, a uh, Microtex needle, because it really cuts the paper um, very, very, it pierces the paper, so when you go to take the papers off your pattern pieces, um, right now they're all on they're all on my pattern pieces so here's my stitching on and and you know you go like 7a 7b 7 you know, it gives you the diagram but you keep the papers on until you um, are ready to are ready to uh, sew them all together and then when the whole thing is done you take the papers off I've also found I have a I have my rotary cutter over there a small rotary cutter over there and I have my rotary cutter over here and, and, and my long rule to trim off my papers um, to trim off the the edges of my um, my piecing which I'll show you I have that rotary cutter so I'm not getting up and down I have um, sort of a couple stations here um, this is my master copy as you know it's my master pattern I'm working on this bit right here the trunk I've gotten that much done <laughs> I've worked on it for several hours it's not hard it is not hard it's a uh, it's tedious oh here is what I had bought if you can see this is a my add-on add, -on, add, -on, add -on, a quarter plus I got these on Amazon two of them I believe for fourteen dollars something like that um, well worth it well well worth it I have my machine set at a very low stitch very low almost one a little bit oh, more than one um, to make a very, very fine stitch. And I'm here. Um, so everything I'm doing is right here. And then I have, I've just to change it up a little bit, <laughs> excuse my mess, coming in my sewing room, I um, put my ironing board right behind me. It was over my other side, but I just put it right behind me so I can, I'm sitting in my chair and I can just do this. I can just go that way. I got to get a new ironing board cover. Please excuse that. Um, so yeah, so here I am. I'm going to set my camera up and hopefully I'll be able to show you um, what, how, you know, how you do this. I'm on eight. Now, let me see. Let me show you on this if I can, on my picture. Eight is, um, I'm doing this light colored pink triangle. This is my, this is my pattern piece here, which is here. This light colored pink triangle is up there. I haven't done it on my others. It's, it's not up there. I've done this part, part as you've seen. Now I'm working on this little piece right here. I'm gonna set my camera up and I'm gonna show you hopefully um, how I've, I'm doing this. <laughs> um, and you can see the process of foundation paper piecing. Hopefully um, I've set my camera up so that you can see it, um, what I'm doing. Um, you have to really be careful and deliberate. Now, the pattern calls for um, a certain f amount of fabric. And I, if you had referred, if you had been watching, my pattern had called, hopefully you can see this, for like the this fabric is a third of a yard, a quarter of a yard, a yard. I got a lot more than was called for um, because when you're cutting pieces for your pattern, you have to make very, very sure that you are covering your entire piece. Now, my, uh, hopefully you can see this, my um, pink for that bit of tusk there 
is 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 right here. It's this pattern piece here. 8A that I'm working on. Now what you do is I'm having the pattern here like this and I'm, I'm looking for my my 8A piece which is pink. Now what you do is the first piece that you're going to be positioning is on I'm using a solid but if if you had a right side and a back side of your material and you have this piece of paper you want the right side of your fabric to the wrong side oh pardon me you want the wrong side of your fabric to the wrong side of the paper all right you want the wrong side of your fabric with the right side out so this is funky the first piece this is what you're doing this is why it's it's a, 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 a it's not hard, it's just you have to be careful. So I have, if this was the wrong side of my fabric, this is my right side of my fabric. Now, I know, I can see that my pink fabric, back of the paper to the back of the fabric, my first piece, it stays, it's, it's there. Now, by all means, you can put a pin, if you want to, in the middle to secure that piece of fabric. Now, what you do is you find 8A. That's my piece of fabric. Now, I'm wanting to see 8B. Now, there's 8B. Now, I know that I have, I've cut some fabric for the color ways that I know is the corresponding to my, my key. Remember, we sorted that out. I know that 8B this piece of fabric, even though it's big, will cover that little piece right there. And then I can use other little scraps to, to use here. But I know that this one, I'm going to err on the cautious side. Now what I do here, and I like this because it, it moves my rotating mat here. So what I do now is with my small piece of card, I see the line for between 8A and 8B. And I put my card right on that line. And I fold over, I fold over and crease that. Then with my smaller add a quarter inch and it goes right up to there. I'm going to trim off that piece of pink. Take my quarter inch away. Now I know that that's a quarter inch seam. Okay, I know that that's, this is where I'm going to sew now. I'm going to take this piece of fabric, and again, if, if I have a batik which is right and wrong sides, I like working with batik because of this, because it doesn't have a right or wrong side. But if you had a right side now, this is where you're putting right sides together. This is the side you're going to see. This is your, this is what you're looking at. So obviously you're right, putting right sides together. Now what you're wanting to do is I made that fairly straight, but this one is real straight. What I want to do is I want to make sure when I sew on line 8B, from there this point to that point, that my fabric is right there and it's going, when it flips up, when it flips up, it's going to cover 8B. And I have extra. So I know that. So now what I do is I take my fabric I turn it over and I'm going to come over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch on 8B. I'm going to put my needle down. Now there are, there are several schools of thought. So there are several schools of thought that you start away a little bit off the line, a little bit before the line, maybe two stitches and then two stitches off. I put my needle down right in on the line and I hold my fabric and I make a tiny little stitch and then I just stitch along 8B. I stitch perfectly on the line right to the end. I sort of hold it and then it, it finishes right at the line. I cut my threads and as you can see I now have this here. I take my pin out 
Now I flip it over. This is the side we're going to see. And where's my... Oh, here we go. So now, doesn't make a lot of sense, but right there, I don't have to get up from the, from the ironing board. So I uh, fold all of this up nice and neat. Now it's an awful lot you're saying, and I can trim that away like that and use, and then I, what? Look, then I can, I come to eight. So I've done eight A, I've done eight B. Now I take my card and there's a long line here from eight C. So I want to take my paper and fold it over and crease it along 8C. Now this one will need my longer ruler. That's why I got the two of them. And I trim this, these pieces off. And is there waste? Yes, there is. But boy, oh boy, I'm not gonna be having no, no, I'm not gonna be having this so it doesn't cover my seams, right? I'm, I don't want that. I want all this fabric to cover my, my whole piece. And with paper piecing, that can really mess you up. So now I have on HC, I know right here, I have a nice seam allowance and I find a piece, my fabric that I know from the key that will cover my 8C. This piece will cover this here. So I put it that there and I make sure and again, if it was a right and a wrong side, you'd be putting right sides to right sides. I make sure I sort of, I, my, my light is over there because I don't want to do it as a glare, but I have a fairly straight line. So I'm sewing from thumb to thumb, right there to there. And when I flip that up, I know that that covers the part for 8C. I bring over, come over to my ironing, my sewing machine and I put my needle right down on the first line and I hold it tightly. And then I go right to the line. Again, if you, if you YouTube it or if a lot of people go past the line, I don't. I do get rid of these threads though, pretty much. So then I turn this over and I iron it. I, I press it like this. I find it's just as good as ironing. But as you can see, I have everything right near me, right next to me. Now, with it's all nice and neat, 8B, 8A, 8B, 8C, oh, I'm coming over to 8D. 8D. Now, I need a larger piece of fabric that I've cut, just random, that will, fit, will go... We're going to the dotted line on the pattern. We're going to the dotted line, not just this area here. This is the seam allowance. So you need on a pattern to go to the dotted line. So I have to see if that's going to um, um, fit that with the dotted line. Yes, it will. So now what I do is I take my small card and I put it between 8A. I'm working on 8D, line 8D. And I fold the paper over. Now, if you've gone a stitch or two more, you'll, you'll see that your paper will, you sort of have to pull your stitches out. So that's why I just go to the line. I don't go over it because then I don't have to pull my stitches out. So here's my quarter inch. Put my paper back down. I know that that's that. And then I have, this is my sewing line. Then I have to figure out, hopefully, that this piece of fabric, which I've cut bigger, I have to figure out when it's flipped over, will it cover, with the seam, will this cover my 8D? And yes, it will. So I smooth everything out. I take this, I hold that there. I turn it over and I come and I sew right at the beginning of 8D. And I sort of hold the machine at the end so I so you have a nice tight stitch. I flip that up. It's very monotonous <laughs> once you get going, but you can see how this triangle of the trunk is forming. Okay, 
So now that's 8D. So now we want 8... Oh, my phone. Oh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Isn't that the funniest thing? Uh. So, excuse me. Um, so now I'm on, I'm going to be on 8E. Everything is nice and as it, this is the right side. This is what we're going to look at. So I turn it over, make sure, and then I'm going to find 8E. There's 8E right there. And I fold my paper over and I want to get rid of all of this stuff. I want to get rid of all of this. And it's a perfect quarter of an inch. Do you see that? It's a perfect quarter of an inch. I don't have to worry about it. I take my card away. I get another large piece of fabric that I need, that I know will cover my 8E. And I've ma I make sure, there's my, there's my diamond for my tusk. I make sure that that covers and it has my seam allowance and that's right. And I take this over to my art, my sewing machine, and I find 8E. Start right there. Go right to the dot, right to the end. Turn it over, and then you'll see there's my perfect diamond for the trunk. Don't worry about all this rubbish here. I'm going to get rid of all that. Right now I can, I can start just getting rid of some of it. Just some of it. I can use that piece now. Now what do I need? I've done 8E. I'm doing 8F, which is a little piece of the stripe of the trunk. So I have a bigger piece here. I come and I find 8F, the line 8F. This is nice and nice and straight. I get my card. I put it on line 8F and I pull the paper over. And here's all this rubbish here. I take my, add a ruler. And that lip fits right over there. You don't have to worry. It's wonderful. Uh, you have to have one of these, seriously. You take your card away. I take my, my trunk piece, and I see that's where my quarter of an inch is there. I have a nice bit big piece. I know that that will fit when I flip it over. Hold it. I stitch right on that line, right to the top line. Again, some people prefer to go over. I don't. I go from line to line with a nice, not a back stitch. You can back stitch it because you want your, if you want, but I don't. I just think, I just sort of hold my machine. So here's this line. Oops. I flip that over. This is his trunk. Stripes. Her trunk stripes. This is a handy dandy. You can get them at the, um, um, a hardware store, uh, wallpaper seam rollers. Brilliant, brilliant job. So now I pull that over. I can actually get rid of some of this extra. And as you see, there is, there is waste. But boy, I, I, I want to be able to cover this. And if you've ever done paper piecing, you'll realize, oh my goodness, I haven't had enough to cover it. So now I'm going to 8G. Uh, 8G. I'm going to that line there because we've just done 8F, 8G. I'm coming over here. I'm putting my add a quarter. There's my nice quarter inch. Pull it back, get rid of my card. Get my nice bit of tusk. I know that that's going to fit. I come over right on the line. Cut my threads here. Pull this part of my tusk up. Do that. 
I can get rid of some of this fabric here. As you see, I really cut generously, but I don't want to be left with non, no, you know, no fabric. So 8G, now my 8, 8H, put my card. It's very repetitive. This is all you do. You bring your, you, you put your pattern up, you crease it. And I, I really think, you put your add a quarter, I th really think you do need everything here. I don't think there's a, I don't think you can, you know, you, you can sort of wing it. Uh, perhaps you can, but I don't want to. So now I have, I'm going to get a smaller piece because all I need is a piece for that corner. I just need a piece in 8H, 8H. So then I realize I can use this scrap for the smaller bit. Turn it over, and I can see that it matches, it, it fills the hole up to the seam allowance. So I turn it over, holding it. I go to 8H, put my needle down, tight stitch, almost the back stitch. Clip my threads. Bring my 8, 8H up, stitch, roll it along like that, and we have one more left, which is, oh, excuse me. <laughs> so now we have 8I, which is the last piece on, the, on my pattern. So I bring this over, get my quarter inch, add a quarter, take off his, that, that fabric there. Whoops. Let me just take that fabric off there. Pull my pattern back. Get another piece of scrap. I might have to use a bigger one. Let me just see if I have a piece of scrap in that one. Um, yeah, this will do. Bit of scrap here. Put, excuse my phone. <laughs> it's funny. My kids are looking at my kids are looking at um, houses to buy. Um, so then I'm going to go from here. This is my last piece here. Cut my threads. <coughs> Pardon me. And where's my roller? Here we go. Now, what we have here, there's my trunk piece. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my ironing board. I'm going to show you um, well, actually, no, I'm just going to go over to my ironing board, which is right behind me, and I'm going to iron this. I'm going to iron it. Then I'm going to bring you my camera down, and I'm going to show you just how I trim it. So here's the piece that I've just made, all right? And it's like, what the, What in the world is this? This is my piece with that, with that um, diamond that diamond in the middle of the, his trunk there, on this bit of the trunk. So I turn it around. And there's my paper, and on this, on this side of my bench here, I have my ruler and a rotary cutter. And I put my ruler and my rotary cutter on the, not the, not the dark line where I've stitched. Not, it has a dotted line, and that's your seam allowance. You want to cut on the dotted line. Cut all your papers away. Keeping everything up nice and neat. Trimming right on that dotted line. And you end up with a bit of your trunk. That's upside down now. But as you can see, you see how that, that little diamond? So the rest of my trunk let me get my picture the rest of my trunk this is lighter but this is this this is this bit here you see that that's that bit there that little pink diamond and then I'm going to get down down here so I hope <coughs> I have a long way to go <laughs> um, but I hope that makes sense you keep the paper on you keep the paper on until the whole thing is done and, and then you start putting together 
your pieces so it's from one and it gives you the diagram how you sew them all together so this is the top of my trunk uh, this is the top um, and my trunk's going down I've been, I'm doing this right here so I've done this bit right here and now my next bit is this one here so I hope you um I hope you enjoyed that um, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep doing it and I'll show you some more progress